the secret scrimmage is actually becoming pretty secretive again in the Hubert Davis era at North Carolina. But there are some details that have leaked out for us. Let's completely overreact to all of it. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. It's Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. My name is Isaac Shade and I am your host. I want to welcome all of you everydayers into the show as well as anyone else who is joining us for the first time or maybe coming back for more. We're so glad you're here. Make this part of your daily routine. Come back and get your very best Tar Heels content every single day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on for a free deposit a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Coming up on the show today, got a fun six pack I'm going to bring to you. It's something we do on Locked On College Basketball, where it's just like six quick hitting things that I want to share with you one drink at a time. And then I've also got a hilarious, hilarious story from the world of college basketball that I have to share with you. I cannot wait to talk about this. But first, let's get into talking about Carolina versus Florida Atlantic in sat- last Saturday's secret scrimmage. <clears throat> So first off, these secret scrimmages have been around for a while. For those of you who don't know the lay of the land, basically what you're allowed to do before the regular season starts, which by the way is Monday, November 6th, less than two weeks away now, you're allowed two opportunities. Either you can have two public exhibitions, two closed secret scrimmage things, or one of each. Carolina typically opts to do one of each. So last Saturday, they had a secret scrimmage down in sleepy retirementville, Boca Raton, Florida, against uh, a, a Final Four team from last year, Florida Atlantic. And then they will have the exhibition game coming up this Friday that we're all looking forward to. Now, there have been times when these secret scrimmages have been very lock and key, like nothing coming out, no word, nothing at all. And you might hear, hey, it sounds like they played well. And there's this and that, just little snippets, but not much. There have been other times where we get a good deal of information from these secret scrimmages, exactly how they were laid out, who scored, what kind of points happened, those types of things. The Hubert Davis era at North Carolina feels like it's been somewhere in between that, where we're not getting a stat sheet, a box score, aren't even really getting much about the breakdown of how the secret scrimmage went. But there are sources that are willing to give things. And so just kind of piecing a couple of various things together here. Here is some of what we know. Um, number one, from Jeff Goodman, who is, you know, very locked in on um, college basketball, getting lots of information from folks. And so um, I, I tend to believe what he tweeted out. And he said this. North Carolina had no issues with FAU in a secret scrimmage. Tar Heels were dominant. RJ Davis was terrific. Jalen Washington and Elliot Cadeau played well for UNC. From Eric Bossy on Twitter, who is one of the great um, recruiting guys at 247 Sports, says, quote, source tells me UNC beat FAU 79-63 in secret scrimmage today. He tweeted this last Saturday. Elijah Martin didn't play for FAU, end quote. And then the third one of, again, of somebody that's become a reputable source that, that I want to believe is Trilly Donovan, who has um, been kind of scooping a lot of college basketball stuff in the past year or two, said, um, this was also Saturday, North Carolina beat Florida Atlantic by 20 plus in today's scrimmage per, per source, end quote. So we've got three things there from people that I believe and trust in. I, I saw other things come out on Saturday, but nothing else from sources as reputable as these. So these are the three that I want to choose to believe in, even though part of what we hear from them is a discrepancy. Eric Bossy is saying Carolina won by 16 from his source. Trilly Donovan is saying from his source that Carolina won by 20 plus. Either way, it's a comfortable win, but a lot of times, so let's get into my takeaways. Um, Number one, a lot of times we don't have 
it's not actual just like we played a scrimmage and here's the score and so taking away any sort of score from this is is not the correct way to look at it um so i I want to encourage all of us to be encouraged by by hearing 79 to 63 or by winning by 20 plus but to put zero percent stock in that because both teams are trying stuff experimenting messing with stuff it's more about who played well and how they did rather than the score. So number one takeaway is that. Number two takeaway. Reading in the comments on these tweets or from things I've heard from other people, people are trying to slander Florida Atlantic and they have absolutely no idea. Come on, man. This is a phenomenal basketball team that won a ton of games last year, made the final four, and they're getting everyone back. So, like, j- just trust me when I say that Florida Atlantic is a very, very good basketball team. Moving from Conference USA now into the American Athletic Conference that Houston just vacated, and they're the favorite in the American Athletic Conference, one of the top, you know, seven, eight conferences in the country. And and I know, I know there's others that are saying, oh, but it was a lucky run to the Final Four. They barely sneaked by Memphis. They got to play fairly Dickinson in round two instead of Purdue. Okay, sure, maybe. But then in the Sweet 16, they knocked off Tennessee, who had just beaten Duke. And then the week or the the game after that, excuse me, in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four, they beat K-State, who was playing at the top level of Big 12 play, the best conference in basketball last year. And then they were uh, a Lamont Butler buzzer beater away from making it to the national championship game. So I don't want to hear lucky run from Florida Atlantic. They had a phenomenal season and carried it over into the postseason play and get everybody back. This is a legit basketball team. That's the next thing you need to know. However, number three, take away from this, um, as, as we read, Elijah Martin didn't play for Florida Atlantic. And them not having him matters. For what I've studied, for those of you who aren't aware, I, I also host Locked On College Basketball. So I've tried to lock into all 362 teams as much as I can. It's very difficult to do because there's so many guys, so many teams, whatever. But you need to know that as as all the research I've done this offseason, Elijah Martin, John L. Davis are the two dudes for FAU this year. And not having one of those available would be for us like not having R.J. Davis or Armando Baycott available. So it's it's that level. So that factors in to the way Carolina played and the way FAU played. That's the third thing. Number four, this is just hilarious, but Jeff Goodman's tweet initially said, uh, called RJ Davis, RJ Evans. That's awesome. That's hilarious. He's since gone back and edited it, but I was laughing at it. Number five, takeaway. Again, we've already said it, but we don't have many details at all. We have often gotten the format. We have often gotten the layout, but we had none of that. So please be wise and careful with what we take away. Number six. Let's also remember that this is very akin, the way I like to describe it, is to like an NFL preseason game, an NBA preseason game, or spring training, where the results just don't matter. Coaching staffs are are doing this to look at guys, see who might fill out the roster, see who's going to get playing time, see who rises to the occasion, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, Number seven, takeaways. Someone asked on Twitter, and someone had actually asked me in our Discord channel, which, come join the Locked on Tar Heels Discord. The link is in the show notes. Would love to have you there. About whether this is more about FAU being overrated or Carolina being underrated. Remember, um, FAU, again, made that Final Four, returns everyone, and, and is ranked higher than the Tar Heels are in the preseason rankings. I think they're 10th, is that right, in the preseason AP poll? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but as I'm talking, I'll look. Um, To me, this is about a little bit of both of these things, both about um, I do think that Carolina is underrated. I don't necessarily know that Florida Atlantic is, they might be slightly overrated. Yeah, 10th in the preseason AP poll. They might be slightly overrated, but I would not call them egregiously overrated. I believe that at worst, they're a top 15, top 20 team. And so I would call them probably comparable to Carolina. So th- the fact that Carolina seemed to not only hang with, play well with, but overtake these guys is a big thing. So <clears throat> I-, I think there's 
parts of both of this that uh, FAU is slightly, but not not terribly overrated. But I think that Carolina is more so underrated. We're going to learn that more as we get into the season. And then the last takeaway for me, and this is perhaps the biggest one, uh, I wanted to save it for last. You know what I'm most encouraged by, by what I read? It's not that RJ Davis was, what was the word Jeff Goodman used? Terrific. I expect that from him. It's not that Elliot Cadeau played well for UNC. I expect him to get there, although that is encouraging. What I am most encouraged by is to to read Jeff Goodman pointing out Jalen Washington to talk about how he played well. And again, that's just it's just kind of almost a throwaway. But he named three guys, and it was R.J. Davis, it was Elliot Cadeau, and Jalen Washington. That is, you get what a big deal that is, right? Jalen Washington coming back from everything he's come back from, all the injuries and everything. Carolina we perceive to be pretty thin in the front court behind Armando Baycott. Who's going to play the four? Who's going to back up Mondo? Is Okonkwo ready for those minutes? But if Jalen Washington is ready to go and he's playing at a high level against another high-level basketball team, folks, you should be very encouraged by that. And in fact, I think Pat Pat Kilby and I are going to talk more about that on Wednesday's show tomorrow. So now, Again, this is stuff we're just all hearing second, third, probably even fourth hand. We're going to learn a lot more when we all get to see this with our own eyes on Friday evening as Carolina has their exhibition game. Get ready for that. And uh, we we will then be able to have all sorts of fun takeaways from it and can't wait to do that with you. Now, as I said earlier, I want to give you a six pack of Carolina information. Some great news for Armando Baycott. Some great news for RJ Davis plus some hilarity from the Locked on Tar Heels Discord that you're not going to want to miss. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll talk about it right after I tell you that today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which helps you find the right people for your team, both faster and for free. Beyond that, you can create a free job post in just a few minutes. It's super easy on LinkedIn Jobs. And then all you do is you add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And then you can use simple tools like screening questions to make it easy to focus on candidates who have just the right skill set and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. This is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Post your job right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I want to remind you also that coming up on Friday, Locked On College Football Kickoff Live, getting you ready for all of this weekend's college football action, 11 a.m. till noon Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube page. Make sure to check it out. All right, we do this pretty regularly on Locked On College Basketball, where we give a six pack of information where it's almost like some quick hitters, but all sorts of stuff from across Carolina, both basketball and football, that I wanted to make sure to share with you on today's show. And the first of which is some great preseason publicity for Mr. Armando Baycott, as though he needs some, right? On Monday, the AP preseason All-American team came out just one, just five guys, and Armando Baycott is named to that team, along with Purdue's Zach Eady, who was a unanimous choice, Marquette's Tyler Kolek, who was the Big East player of the year last year, um, Hunter Dickinson, who has transferred to Kansas, um, projects to be their main scorer and one of their best players, well, probably their best player this year, but it'd be interesting to see how that all fits together. Duke's Kyle Filipowski returning to Durham, and then Armando Baycott. Now, there were no votes given, but the way they lay it out, it makes it seem like the order was Edie, again, a unanimous selection, then Kolek, Dickinson, Flip, and Armando Baycott. So for making the AP preseason first team All-Americans. Um, secondly, though, yeah, actually, before I move on, 
I've always thought it's funny. You know how in this day and age, um, modern college basketball and, and modern basketball is often four around one. We got four guards of some variety around a big guy. I want to see a team like this because it's all big dudes and Tyler Kolek is the only guard on this team. I want to see the flip-flop of this uh, where we have four big dudes and one guard. Kolek running the show at the one. You could have Kyle Filipowski at the two. Hunter Dickinson can shoot it a little bit. Let's have him at the three. Armando at the four. And Zach Eady, the big Canadian dude playing at Purdue uh, as your five. I think that would be a hilarious team to watch play, and I want to see it happen. Next, number two in our six-pack. And I'll take a drink as we do it. Oh, man, needed that water. Preseason Bob Cousy list is out. This is looking for the best point guard in the country. They list 20 players preseason. It's just a watch list. Players can play their way onto it or off of the list as the season goes on. But what you need to know is that one of the names on this list is R.J. Davis of North Carolina. There are 20 other players listed from around the country. I'm not going to read them all off right now, but there are some snubs that were shocking to me. I think that's almost what I want to more mention to you. Virginia's Reese Beekman, not on the list. Interestingly, from Duke, Tyrese Proctor is on the list, but Jeremy Roach is not. Um, if you keep up with, with recruiting, you know that Isaiah Collier, Collier excuse me, is right at the top of the list for the class of 23. He was on the list from USC, but Boogie Ellis, their returning guy, fifth-year player, like early favorite for Pac-12 player of the year, was not on this list. Some others, Max Asmus from Texas, who transferred from Oral Roberts to Texas. If you didn't know, yeah, he's there. He's on the list, but Tyrese Hunter's not. There's a whole bunch of other dudes really interesting to see. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I, I could list off a whole thing, and, and I will actually on today's episode of Locked on College Basketball. So if you want to hear the full list of who my snubs are, check that out. Number three in our six-pack, here's another sip of water. Um, I heard Jones Angel, the voice of the Tar Heels, both football and basketball, recently talking. Uh, he had received a question because you you probably caught it live action that Eric Montross had had said, and I think we probably all assumed this that he was not going to be able to do the radio broadcast this year because of his cancer. Totally understandable, makes a ton of sense, and so it's like this twofold thing where on one hand. Definitely commis continuing to commiserate, think about and pray for the Montrose family. But you're also thinking about logistically, okay, so who's going to join Jones on the broadcast? And so um, I, I heard Jones talking about this, saying he's having this question a lot, um, and that they're not ready to make an announcement yet, basically. The plan, though, he said, and they're still working on contracts, is not replacing it one for one, meaning there's not going to be just one person that slides in to Eric's role all season long. They will look to replace him with multiple different people, including former players from Carolina, which will be pretty neat to hear. He, he mentioned the potentiality of having Adam Lucas do that color stuff. Adam, who you know, writes all the great articles for GoHeels.com. And so some interesting possibilities, uh, but it, it sounds like there's going to be a little bit of a revolving door of characters. So keep your eyes and ears, I guess, since it's the radio broadcast out for that. Number four on our six pack. For the first time all season, no Carolina football players were honored with an ACC Player of the Week award. The ACC each week um, on Monday awards players of the week from the previous week, Saturday of football, and it's players from each position. Carolina has had at least one every week they've played so far until now. None on this week's list. They had four last week, none today or on Monday, excuse me. But here's the thing. I suggest to you that they should have, and here's why. For example, at linebacker, the pick for linebacker of the week was Virginia's James Jackson. I think the only reason he was chosen is because of that game ceiling interception he had against Carolina. But his numbers, they do not equate to linebacker of the week for me. Six tackles, three solo, one interception, two quarterback hurries. Six tackles, three solo. Let me remind you of Cedric Gray's numbers. 18 tackles. He had triple the number of tackles of this dude, 11 of which were solo. He had more solo tackles, Cedric Gray, than this dude that won the award had individual tackles, almost by double. 
Cedric Gray had one tackle for loss. This guy had none and one quarterback hurry. So Gray didn't have an interception and one fewer quarterback hurries, but everything else blew this dude out of the water. Heck, we could even go to uh, Power Eccles, whose numbers look better. Remember, six tackles for this dude that won the award. Power Eccles had 12 tackles, seven of which for solo. So both Carolina linebackers had more solo tackles than the dude that won this award had total tackles. Come on, ACC. That's Bush League. Or what about at wide receiver? This one's a little less egregious, but still. The selection was once again a Virginia player. Maybe I'm just salty. Maybe that's the problem. But it's Malik Washington who came into the game and, and probably is still the ACC leading receiver. So I understand it because he had a really strong game. 12 receptions, 115 yards, and a touchdown. Oh, but let me tell you about this dude named Tez Walker, who had okay one fewer reception than Malik Washington from Virginia. Tez had 11. For 146 yards compared to Washington's 115. And, the, and Tez obviously had a touchdown just like Washington did. So, sure, Tez had one fewer reception, but 31 more yards. I don't get it. Carolina should have gotten another award, but they didn't. And that's, I guess, what you have to live up to or, or live with, I should say, when you don't win on Saturday. All right, number five in our six-pack. Let's get another drink of water. I got to share a funny story with you from the Locked on Tar Heels Discord channel. Again, the, sh the link is in the show notes, both on audio and video. The FanDuel line has come out for North Carolina at Georgia Tech on Saturday. It is Carolina favored by 11 and a half points. Now, you heard me talk on yesterday's show about how um, Carolina, since 2020, has lost six games outright that they were favored as double digits. And so this line comes out, Carolina's favored by 11 and a half. And our guy at W.T. Hager, we'll just give his call sign, on Discord said, quote, can we just tell the odds makers to, to never, ever project UNC to win by double digits ever again? <laughs> I love it. Right with you. I love this call. Like, can, can we just move that line down to nine and a half? I, I it can't cost you too much, right, Vegas, it, to do this. We'll, we'll, we'll offset the, the losses for you, but we need this to be a single digit number so that Carolina can win hilarious stuff and you love to see it but but there you go there's the line from FanDuel our official betting partner here at the Locked On Network and then number six on our what to watch or not our what to watch for excuse me I'm getting ahead of myself to the weekend on our six pack is ACC tip-off for basketball is happening today and tomorrow the women's ACC tip-off is today, and then the men's is tomorrow, Wednesday. And so very quickly on the heels of that, we'll learn the vote for the ACC preseason poll, and we will learn the vote for like ACC um, preseason players of the year awards, individuals, as well as the all ACC selection. So look for that to come out probably um, Wednesday and Thursday, women on Wednesday, men on Thursday. We'll see. It might even come out day of. If so, we'll learn it later today for the women. So there's your six pack. Isn't that fun? Just some quick hitters. Boom, boom, boom. Coming at you. Well, friends, sometimes there are stories from the world of college athletics that are so wild and insane that I just have to share them with you, even if they aren't specifically related to Carolina. But we can appreciate this one because it's a young college student who was hungry and really wanted his Taco Bell. <laughs> I will share this story with you in just a second, right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts, like Taco Tuesday. Today, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide you even more value. With the Prize Picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with that injury insurance. And this thing is so easy to do. I, I love Price Picks because they make it really user friendly. You just pick two or more players, you look at the projected stat given to you, and then just pick if you think that player is going to go more or less. For example, today the NBA kicks off. They've got Austin Reeves from the Lakers set at 15 and a half points. You all know how he's been blown up. I'm hitting the more. 
on that. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Okay. You might remember the name McKenzie Mbako, and here's why. He was initially committed to Duke to be a freshman this year. He's class of 2023 elite college basketball player, um, eventually decommitted from Duke right on the heels of Kyle Filipowski deciding to come back. Hmm, coincidence? No, absolutely not. So um, it came down to Indiana or Kansas. He ultimately committed to Indiana. And that's great because it led us to this wild story that I'm about to tell you. He was arrested over the weekend because he would not leave a Taco Bell in Bloomington, Indiana, in the middle of the night. He was arrested for criminal trespass, a Class A misdemeanor, and resisting law enforcement, another Class A misdemeanor. It's obvious. I mean, we're going to talk about in just a second why it's bad, but it is kind of hilarious because all over the internet, all over Twitter, people are calling this dude a hero because it's a terribly run Taco Bell. And they're all like, Mackenzie Mbako is standing up for the people he's taking. I mean, it, it's pretty ridiculous. But in all seriousness, homie, Mackenzie, what are you doing? I love, I love Taco Bell. It has been my guilty pleasure since college. My wife too. It's less than a mile from my house. There will be times when we look at each other and we'll go, Taco Bell, Taco Bell, put your order in the app, boom, go get, like it's close enough where if I forget, if I get home and they forgot my nachos, I'm just going right back really quick to get it. Like that's what we're talking about. Less than a mile from my house. But McKenzie, it's 2.15 in the morning. Yes, that's right. 2.15 a.m. in the morning. My man, you got to go home. They're doing you a favor, the the employees and the police that were called to the scene by trying to send you home so you don't wake up however many hours later feeling awful from the Taco Bell you ate at 2.15 in the morning. Beyond that, you're one of the most prominent freshman college basketball players in the country at one of the most prominent schools in the country. And so because of this, it's now a thing. Everyone, when they look up your name, they will see this. NBA franchises will ask you about this in the lead up to the draft. You just can't make mistakes like this. It's silly. So here's just a couple quotes from the write-up. Quote, according to the Bloomington Police Department, on Sunday at approximately 2.15 a.m., officers responded to Taco Bell at, here's the address, of on a report of a man refusing to leave the property. Upon arrival, officers were advised by Taco Bell management that they were refusing uh, to the man in a vehicle that allegedly cursed and was being, quote, rude to employees. Um, and then from the, the further thing, I, I love this so much. Officers explained to Mbako that he needed to leave the property and he refused to do so and kept the windows closed on his vehicle. At one point, here's the best. This is my favorite part. Mbako began to drive out of the parking lot, but then reversed his vehicle and parked again in a parking space on Taco Bell property. He's so stubborn, he refuses to leave. Eventually, they keep trying to get him out. They they go to get him out. He won't. He won't roll down his window. They have to bust in his window to arrest him and take him in. This story is insane. But here we are. Taco Bell wins and Baco loses. I think that's the moral. Do not mess with Taco Bell. They always win. When you run for the border, you best come with it because Taco Bell's coming back at you. Hopefully no Tar Heels are getting themselves into this level of shenanigans. Friends, what a hilarious way to end our show today. Thank you so much for being with us. You everydayers, as always, glad you're here. If you're new to the show, come on, man. Make this part of your everyday as well. And join us in the Locked on Tar Heels Discord where we have great conversation going on throughout the day. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. Follow me at Isaac Shade. Email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. We'd love to have a conversation with you there. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, smash the like button, and love to hear comments on today's episode coach pat kilby will be with us tomorrow make sure you tune in for that one as well it's always a great day to be a tar he'll be right back with you tomorrow but until then peace